everybody, I'm Sarah, and I'm here today with my co-workers, Zakai and Aliyah. Good morning. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining in today for a virtual Powering Our Future Energy Bike presentation. We'll be live streaming today, but if you'd like to watch again or you'd like to share this with your friends and classmates, this live will be recorded and on YouTube. We're here today to get you powered up about energy, especially renewable energy. So we are here from SRP. Can anyone tell me quickly, who is SRP and what do we do? Great answers. SRP or the Salt River Project is a company that has provided both water and electricity to large parts of the Phoenix metro area since 1903. So while you have been at home from school using computers, TVs, phones, tablets, and more, SRP generated and delivered that electricity to your home. I'm Aaliyah, and first we want you to know that SRP is serious about following the guidelines for social distancing. While you may think Sarah's close by, we're actually far apart, in separate locations. And Zakai and I are able to be a little closer because we're actually siblings and have been quarantining in the same house for several weeks. Or has it been months at this point? It's kind of hard to tell. <coughs> How many of you have been spending more time with your families at home? Yeah, we have been too. We hope you're all staying safe at home. Remember to wash your hands often. Have people told you to sing the happy birthday song when washing your hands? Me too but I'd much rather sing my favorite song while washing up. It's just important to, sh to scrub with the soap for at least 20 seconds. Great, so we know you miss being at school and we miss being able to visit your classrooms. So Sarah, Aaliyah, and I are excited to spend some time together with you today. In this virtual presentation, we are going to learn about electricity and energy transformations. We'll discover different types of natural resources. Later on, we can explore renewable sources of energy Aaliyah and I will ride the energy bikes to power up all these devices you see here, and towards the end we'll play an awesome game called Trivia Crack to review what we learned. Take it away, Sarah. Thanks, Zakai. Are you guys using any of these apps during your online learning adventure? What an <coughs> awesome sunrise photo in the background. The weather has been beautiful lately, and I hope you have been able to get outside to play or ride your bike safely. But remember to social distance and keep at least six feet between you and others. And also to not touch your face until after washing your hands like Zakai just demonstrated. Let's open up the Energy Bike app. Aaliyah and Zakai, did you have a nutritious breakfast this morning? Yeah, yeah we, we did. did. I had some avocado toast, that was pretty delicious. Yeah, I had a breakfast burrito. Did you guys know that when you eat food, it's actually stored as something called chemical energy in your body, and that's the original source for all of the energy in our system here. When we eat breakfast, that food is stored as chemical energy that we're now burning as we're riding these bikes. Earlier this morning, we set up two special energy generating bicycles to power up the different types of light bulbs and a whole bunch of common household items like this hair dryer, a blender, a TV, a fan, and even a mini AC unit you can see up here. We all have devices like these at home and use them every day, so it's important to learn and think about how much energy they use. This is our green board, where everything gets plugged in. Our pedal power is being transformed into electrical energy in these wheel generators, and then it's being sent to our energy board through connecting cables. That thing that looks like a lightsaber is our pedalometer, and it will show us the charge in our system. When it's in the red, the system is almost out of power, so we should pedal faster to keep it in the green. So, everyone from home, please cheer us on. If it gets to the all the way white at the top, that means we're riding too hard and generating too much electricity. So Leah and I need to slow down a little bit. Be sure to help us out from home. That number at the top of the pedalometer is our watt meter, and it's gonna show us how much electricity is being used by the things we're powering in watts. Whew, I'm running out of breath. Sarah, will you help out? Happy to help, Zakai. Keep riding, you two. A watt is a unit of measure used with electricity, kind of like how pounds are used for weight and meters for distance. Okay, nice work, riders. Now we can see that Zakai and Aaliyah are generating and using around 40 watts of electricity to power all those LEDs. There are three different types of bulbs on our energy board. There's incandescent. Everyone say incandescent. 
Incandescent. Compact fluorescent, or CFL. Everyone say compact fluorescent. That means you at home as well. Compact fluorescent. Great. And the latest and greatest light emitting diodes, or LED bulbs. Everyone say LED. LED. Good. How are you two doing? Before you stop writing, how about some more light? Can you two power up all of the light bulbs? Whew. That Whew. was pretty tough. Took a lot of energy. <laughs> okay, J great job guys. You can stop writing now. Let's give them a round of applause. Why don't you two <coughs> grab a drink of water after that ride? We're going to talk more about the differences between the types of light bulbs later in the presentation. So while Zakai and Aaliyah are riding the energy bikes, make some observations about any differences you notice, like in terms of how many watts they each use or how bright they are or anything else you might observe. It may help you out later on Trivia Crack. Thanks for the water break, Sarah. Generating electricity sure takes a lot of energy. So it's super important to stay hydrated when exercising. For those of you who are just joining in, my name is Aaliyah and I'm here with my brother Zakai. Sarah is also here and we're from SRP for the Powering Our Future Energy Bike presentation. We'd normally be in your classroom so you could ride these cool bikes while we present, but we're practicing social distancing. So we're doing it virtually during the school closure. This live will be recorded so you can watch us again and please share this with your friends and family so that they can watch with their online learning schedule, or even over the summer. All right, Zakai, let's get back to the presentation. Thanks, Aaliyah. So, we just generated some electricity using the energy bikes. But what is electricity? We use it all the time, so let's Google a good definition. So, it looks like electricity is a form of energy resulting from the flow of charged particles, such as electrons and protons. There are actually two main types of electricity. Static electricity, like what happens when you rub your feet on the carpet and when your hair stands up, or when you get shocked touching a doorknob, or a sibling. <laughs> also, there is current electricity. This is the type we use um, and we generate in the bikes and we use in our homes and businesses. Now, I wonder if there's a way we could demonstrate the flow of electricity here today. Hey, look, a snap from one of our other presenters, Jasmine. I wonder if she knows we're working. <laughs> Should we open it, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody ready? Snaps disappear quickly. Anybody catch that? Wait, it looks like she's sending something else. Huh, wait a second. Didn't I see some of you, didn't I see you put some of those in the kit before we left home this morning? Yeah, I absolutely did. These are so much fun and I knew we'd be talking about electricity today. Let's demonstrate how these work. It's a lot of fun. So, if you guys can see, there are two metal strips on the ball. These are called terminals and they are where the electricity is going to start and end its journey. If I touch one terminal, nothing happens. But if I touch both of them, it lights up. So, if Aaliyah touches the other terminal, do you think it'll light up? It does not, until we complete the circuit. Pretty cool, right? Exactly, so when we're touching fingers along with the ball, we created a closed circuit. And remember that in this coronavirus situation, we should always be washing our hands for at least 20 seconds after touching someone else's hand. And remember that social distancing means we should keep six feet or more between us and any non-household members of the family. That's why Sarah is in a completely different room than us. We're in the same family and share a house, so we can be a little closer and do it safely. So if I'm not mistaken, the electricity started with a battery in the UFO ball, traveled through both of our bodies just like it does in these wires, and returned to its starting place to make those cool sounds. Wow, what a fun demonstration. Could you two feel any kind of shock? No, Sarah, the battery inside the ball is very small and it sends a tiny amount of electricity, so it's safe as a demonstration. Now, we've been using words like energy and electricity a lot today, but are they the same thing? Well, simply put, energy is the ability to do work and it comes in many different forms and is constantly changing from one form to another. 
The first law of thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed or changed from one form to another. Electricity is an extremely useful type of energy. You can use electricity in the wall to charge your phone, or heat up food in the toaster, or spin the motor of a blender. These uses of energy are examples of energy transformations. Let's take a peek at this video clip. Now, the energy transformations don't stop once the electricity reaches our homes. For example, we transform electrical energy to thermal energy when we use a toaster, a hairdryer, or a space heater. We transform electrical energy to mechanical energy when we use a fan, a washing machine, or a blender. Finally, we convert electrical energy to radiant energy when we turn on the lights. I think I've seen that girl before. Hmm. Still can't place her. In case you have just joined us, my name is Sarah and I'm joined with Zakai and Aaliyah. We're here today from SRP, doing the Powering Our Future Energy Bike presentation. And we'd love to be in your classroom again soon, so you can be riding our awesome energy bikes. Speaking of the bikes, let's check out some more energy transformations while Zakai and Aaliyah get some more exercise. You guys ready for another ride? Sure thing, Sarah. We need all the exercise we can get being cooped up in the house for the last few weeks. So, my sister and I are now converting the stored chemical energy from the food we ate this morning into mechanical energy in the form of the spinning bike wheel. Like we said earlier, there is a generator on the front of the wheel which is going to transform that spinning mechanical energy into electrical energy, which is gonna flow through our wires over here to our board and come out in the form of light energy or radiant energy. So, we're going from chemical to mechanical, mechanical to electrical, and electrical to radiant. Three transfers of energy. Whew. Aliyah, are you pedaling hard? Absolutely. Do you want me to turn on the fan to cool us off? Awesome. So, now the fan is on, can anyone tell me what type of energy is going on inside of this fan? That's right, it's electrical energy to mechanical energy as the fan blades rotate. All right, Sakai, can you switch on this hair dryer? Right now, I'm pushing the blue button, so there's no heat, only cool air. What energy transformation is going on here? Right, it's the same as the fan, just a much smaller fan inside the hair dryer. All right, Sakai, I've seen students really struggle. I'm gonna turn the heat on, are you ready? Pedal fast. That was pretty hard. Wow, could you see the number of watts, Aaliyah? It sure takes a lot of energy to run a hair dryer, even on low heat. When we have electricity transforming into multiple other forms of energy, like in this hair dryer or in your clothes dryer at home, using thermal and mechanical energy, it takes a lot of energy. So, in our everyday lives, we're transforming a lot of electrical energy to cook our food, keep us comfortable by heating and cooling our homes to keep us entertained, and create light. But where does all of this electricity come from? Yeah, I know, the wall. But what about before it gets there? Where does it come from? Doesn't everything come from the Earth? It's our natural resources, right, Sarah? Yes, we get the energy to generate electricity from natural resources. In fact, all of our light, air, water, plants, animals, soil, and stone are natural resources. We can classify these resources as renewable and non-renewable. What is an example of a non-renewable natural resource? Those are fossil fuels like coal and natural gas, right? You got it, Zakai. Nuclear and oil or petroleum are also considered non-renewables. So how about renewable natural resources? I am really into renewable energy, Sarah. Solar, wind, and hydro are the big three at this point. Awesome. Let's look at a definition for each category. A non-renewable resource is a limited resource that does not regenerate itself in human lifespans. And a renewable resource is a resource which regenerates naturally within human lifespans. 
So what resource is currently the primary source of electricity in Arizona, the United States, and around the world? It's still fossil fuels like coal and natural gas. Currently, coal is the number one fossil fuel used in Arizona, but natural gas will soon become the most widely used non-renewable. So where do we get this coal from? Well, that's right, we mine it, like in Minecraft. Sakai and I brought some coal to show you today, because we can't pass around natural gas. Well, normally we'd pass these around to you in the classroom, but we can't do that today. We want to show you what coal looks like. These are small one pound chunks that are coated with clear paint, so we wouldn't get covered in coal dust because, well, coal can be pretty dirty. Does anyone know how old this piece of coal is? It says right there that it's 250 million years old. Wow, think about that. That is a long time. Coal and other types of non-renewable fossil fuels, such as natural gas and the oil used in cars, were created from the remains of plants and animals that lived 250 million years ago. The underground heat and pressure over millions of years transformed their remains into the fuels we mine and use today. Coal and natural gas are fossil fuels, and also called non-renewable natural resources, which means they will run out someday. Most people, most adults even, have no idea that this is how we generate most of our electricity. Thanks guys, but let's look at how much electricity a one pound chunk of coal can provide. Watching TV, we all do it. Probably a lot more over the last couple of months, right? How long would your TV stay on if all we had was one pound of coal to power it? Just 7.5 hours almost enough to get through a season of Stranger Things. What about video games? Anybody out there gaming in between school assignments or Zoom calls while at home? Remember, the TV is also on when playing. You could get about 4.5 hours of game time from one pound of coal because each device takes about half of the available electricity. Let's jump to the single largest user of electricity in our homes, something we are all using now that summer is near. Air conditioning. Based on a typical sized central AC unit, those small pieces of coal could keep your home cool for about 15 minutes. That's not much time to stay comfortable on a day like today. That really isn't very long, Sarah. And we never just do one of these things at a time. Sometimes the lights might be on, or the AC might be keeping you cool, the refrigerator is keeping your food fresh while you're using the TV in a game system. We're using a lot of electricity all day long. If you added up all the devices that use electricity in your home in just one year, the pile of coal you would need would be absolutely huge, about the size of an elephant. Sakai, do you have any idea how much an elephant weighs? I think about 9,000 pounds. I was going to say, that's a ton of coal, but it's more like 4.5 tons. Wow! The average family in Arizona uses the equivalent of 9,000 pounds of coal each year, and that's just one home. What about all those homes in your neighborhood? the pile of coal to power all those homes would be over 250,000 pounds or 28 elephants. But your neighborhood is only one in your city. Think about the amount of coal needed to power your city, the whole valley. What about the state of Arizona? How about for our whole country? We are using a lot of coal. Let's get back to our little pieces of coal for now. Aaliyah, do you feel a shock when you're touching this? Me neither. So how do we transform this block of coal into electricity? At the power plant, 250 million years of stored chemical energy from fossil fuels are burned to create heat, also known as thermal energy. This heat boils water to create steam, a form of motion energy. The steam goes through pipes and spins a turbine, becoming a mechanical energy. The turbine is connected to a generator which spins magnets to create a flow of electrons. Electrical energy. This is known as the electromagnetic effect. This electricity then flows through distribution lines across our city and into our homes and businesses where we can use it. Even more transfers of energy. Okay, we're burning coal to generate electricity. So what's the problem? Why does our coal use matter? 
Let's look at some issues with coal on these Insta stories. Well, mining and burning coal is a dirty process. For starters, the mining of fossil fuels alters landscapes and introduces contaminants into the air, soil, and water. This poses significant risks for native plants, animals, and human populations. Remember, coal is non-renewable. So at some point, if we continue to use 9,000 pounds of coal per household each year, what do you think might happen? That's right, we will simply run out of it. Remember, burning coal is a dirty process. And while power companies have worked hard to clean it up and have been successful at making it less dirty, burning coal still emits pollutants that dirty our air and contribute to climate change. There's no way around it. When coal is burned to generate electricity, many harmful gases are released and are then trapped by the atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere naturally does the same thing as a greenhouse to help keep temperatures on our planet livable. During the day, the sun shines through our atmosphere and the surface warms up. At night, the Earth's surface cools and releases the heat back into the air. Some of this heat is naturally trapped by our atmosphere. However, as the gases produced from human technology build up over years and years, the temperatures continue to rise. This process is called the greenhouse effect. Here is a unique graph that tracks rising average annual temperatures since the year 1900. Each colored bar represents the temperature change within a different country. It lists the countries in alphabetical order, so the United States is on the top left. Degrees Celsius are represented by the concentric circles. Watch the temperature bars over 116 years. Look at all these countries around the perimeter. You can see that temperature data has been collected from hundreds of different countries. Wow, look at all those red bars. All of this data shows about a 2 degrees Celsius change, which is about 3.6 degrees in Fahrenheit. Have you guys heard about the polar ice caps melting? Over the last 40 years, we've lost about 3 million kilometers of sea ice, which is almost 10 times the size, of the, the size of the state of Arizona. That's a lot of melted water from 1979 to 2016. What happens when sea ice melts into the ocean? The water level rises. What state is that? That's right, it's Florida. Global sea levels are predicted to rise 1 to 2 meters in your lifetime, threatening over a billion people who live in coastal communities around the world. If that prediction holds true, cities like Miami will look much, much different than they do today. Remember kids, humans have helped to cause many of these problems, and it's up to us to help solve them. There are other issues we should mention related to climate change. Our weather patterns are changing resulting in more extreme high and low temperatures. Do you want it to be hotter here in the summer? And wildfire season in the U.S. continues to grow as forested areas become hotter and drier. These fires are expected to become more and more intense, threatening communities across the western United States. There's also an increase in severe tropical storms like hurricanes with increased flooding, which affects millions of people each year. These are people's homes. Can you imagine your neighborhood looking like this? Other areas, including us in the Southwest US, are experiencing severe droughts. These shifts in weather patterns have dramatic effects on plants and animals. Some animals, like the polar bears, are unable to find new places to live. If the earth keeps getting warmer, many plants and animals could struggle to adapt to rapid habitat changes and could face extinction. But the good news is that scientists are working on ways to reduce the emissions produced from fossil fuel, fossil fuel power plants, like natural gas, which burns much cleaner and produces fewer emissions than coal. And we at SRP are committed to powering our future with renewable forms of energy. In case you're just joining us, I'm Alia, and this is my brother Zakai. And we're here today with Sarah to teach you all about renewable energy, electricity, and energy efficiency. Thanks, Alia. Let's open up our energy bike app again to explore something called peak demand. Time for you two to start riding the energy bikes. As Zakai and Alia power up our system and act as our power plants generating electricity, 
I'd like you all to think about the appliances and devices you might use on a typical afternoon after school or after summer activities. Do you see any of those on the table in Zakai and Aliyah's room? You might have a light on in your room while watching TV. And it is summer, so you probably got a fan on to help cool you off, right? Look at how many watts of electricity our devices are using up. Wow, we're already at about 130 watts, Sarah. But maybe people might need to head to the kitchen to make a nice cool smoothie. Because all of you watching know where our electricity comes from, our precious natural resources, we can count on you to turn off the lights and devices when you leave a room, right? So, turn off the lights and the fan and head on over to the kitchen. When we get to the kitchen, turn on a couple more lights and turn on our blender as well. All right, it's getting pretty hot in here. Nice. I think we should turn on the air conditioning. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Ah, the cool air is so nice. Oh, that's tough. Wow, over 600 watts. And we've lost power. Our power plants did a great job trying, so give them a hand. But they just could not keep up with the electrical demand from all of these devices. In your communities, how does SRP get all of this electricity to you? Are there a bunch of energy bikes throughout your neighborhood? Of course not. Let's go back to Instagram for a second. Have you ever seen a power substation like this? Or how about power poles like these? Salt River Project has over 2,400 miles of transmission lines and over 300 substations. These and more are all part of the electrical grid that brings power from generating stations like power plants, dams, and solar and wind farms to your homes and school. Every day across the valley, people are turning on devices that keep us comfortable, entertained, and safe. As more and more electrical devices are turned on, the demand increases on our power plants. Like you just saw when Zakai and I were riding the energy bikes, it got a lot tougher. Let's talk about power usage throughout a typical summer day in the valley with this Insta story. This graph shows us the total overall electricity used in blue. On the y-axis are MW, or megawatts. This means a million watts. And on the x-axis, we can see the time of day. You can see the demand is smaller in the morning and grows throughout the day. From 1 p.m. till 8 at night, we experience peak demand. As you can see in this chart, the peak energy usage is over 7,000 megawatts on a summer day. That's the equivalent of over 7 billion watts. Our watt meter would never go that high. However, even during peak demand, a blackout like we just experienced doesn't happen because SRP has a variety of power sources, both renewable and non-renewable. We already explored the non-renewables, so Sarah is going to help us take a cleaner, more sustainable look at cleaner, more sustainable ways of generating electricity that we can use far into the future. I'd love to, Zakai. Why don't you two get set up for a fun solar demonstration? So the three main sources of renewable energy that you hear about are solar, wind, and hydropower. Here in Arizona, our most abundant renewable energy resource is sunlight or solar energy. So how can sunshine be transformed into electricity? Well, what we see as sunlight is actually tiny individual particles of radiant energy called photons. One way to harness solar energy is through the use of photovoltaic panels or PV. We at SRP are committed to solar energy and have a number of large solar arrays around Southern Arizona like this solar farm just outside of the city, which has over 250,000 panels and produces power for almost 25,000 homes. But how do they work? Well, PV cells are arranged into negative and positive layers. When photons from the sun hit a PV cell, they excite electrons in the cell, knocking them loose. This is called the photovoltaic effect. Because of the electrical charge between the layers of each PV cell, the electrons form a directional current. We know this current of electrons as electricity. 
So, we've brought in some props to do a science demo with a real solar panel. I'll ask Aaliyah to hold this small PV solar panel, and I will hold this light, which will act as the sun for now. Look what happens when Zakai turns the light on and points it at the small solar panel. Now what if some clouds block the photons from reaching the panel? Now the sun comes back out and we're flowing again. Pretty cool, right? Our small particles of light called photons hit the panel and excite the electrons inside, causing them to flow in a direction inside that little cord as electricity. Solar is such a clean and sustainable way of producing electricity, Sarah. We can count on the sun to keep shining for millions of years. But we also have to think about what happened to our renewable energy output at night. Let's revisit our peak demand chart from earlier and add in our renewable energy. As you guys can see, when we're hitting peak demand, our renewable energy output is dropping off. The sun always sets, and the wind usually dies down after sunset. So in order to increase our usage of renewables, we need a way of storing that power after dark. SRP is really charged up about a cool emerging technology that can allow us to use more solar energy even when the sun isn't shining, battery storage systems. Do any of you have a little cell phone charger stick or a power bank to power up your phone when you're out and about? Have you ever thought about what's inside them? Yeah, a battery. These larger systems use the same principle. And this is a power wall. Thanks to SRP, more and more people in the Phoenix metro area are able to store the extra power from their solar panels for use at night or during a power outage. They work just like our cell phone power banks. By using a large number of high capacity battery cells, they store energy that can be used later. On a much larger utility scale, SRP has a number of large battery storage systems. These help reduce the use of fossil fuel power plants that are currently used to generate power during peak demand and at night. Another abundant source of renewable energy in Arizona is wind power. Many of you may have seen a wind farm on a road trip through our state or on the way to California. Let's look at how these windmills generate electricity. Wind turbines typically have three blades that catch the kinetic energy of the wind and transfer it to mechanical energy. Inside the wind turbine, gears spin to power a generator which creates the electromagnetic effect. Once again, more transfers of energy. Renewable energy comes in many forms. One that you may not have thought of, especially here in the desert, is water or hydropower. SRP is super proud of the Roosevelt Dam, just northeast of Phoenix. So how do we harness the power of the Salt River? Well, the water is trapped in a reservoir behind the dam, and then channeled down to spin turbines located within the dam structure. Once again, these turbines are connected to a generator which will produce the electromagnetic effect. Hydropower accounts for almost half of all renewable energy produced within our state and is three times more efficient at generating electricity than fossil fuels. Okay, Sarah, we're gonna clean up here. See you in a second. Okay, thanks. Solar panels, wind turbines, and hydroelectric dams produce no emissions and are safer, cleaner, and renewable. However, there are times when the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing. Each one of us has things at home that always uses electricity. Things like refrigerators, our heating and cooling systems, our hot water tanks, and our Wi-Fi routers. These devices are potentially always using electricity. And there are places that uses electricity 24-7, like hospitals, fire stations, and grocery stores. Even if they aren't open, they still need to keep the food cold, and electricity is very important for those frontline workers. If you think about it, all of these places have one small electrical device in common. They all use light bulbs. We are going to perform an experiment using pedal power and some props. Pay close attention to the watt meter and the number of watts being used for our devices as well as the different types of bulbs we mentioned earlier. We're going to try to determine which of these bulb types is the most energy efficient. Tell us more about efficiency, Zakai. No problem, Sarah. During this online learning adventure, I know we've all had assignments from our teachers. 
I'm in college and I have been doing a lot of my work online lately. If I can spend 30 minutes on an assignment and get it finished instead of 60 or 90 minutes and still get the same grade, I'm being more efficient with my time. Electrical devices can also be considered efficient if they're using less energy to do the same task. Let's ride to find out what type of light bulb is the most efficient. Sounds good, let's go. So on our energy board, we have three different types of light bulbs, incandescent, CFL, and LED. Let's see how much power is needed to run three incandescent bulbs. Ready, Sakai? Yeah. All right, let's go. Take a look at our watt meter. It's over 130, or just about there. All right, this is pretty challenging, so let's move on to three CFLs. Look at the difference in our watt meter, about 60. Okay, now let's try three LEDs. Look at that, it is a lot less energy and it's not so hard now. Wow, great job writing. They were just powering up things we use all of the time. Light bulbs, what's the job of a light bulb? To give us light. Remember Zakai's description of efficiency? Which bulb on our board is the least energy efficient? The incandescent light bulb is an old technology invented over 150 years ago by Thomas Edison and others. As you can see, and as Akai and Aaliyah felt, these bulbs are not very efficient. They require more than six times the number of watts that LEDs do to do the same job, make light. CFLs and LEDs are much more efficient using only 13 and nine watts per bulb. Sarah, it's very true that using more efficient bulbs has made a big difference for us when riding. It's way easier powering up those LEDs than the incandescents. But what would be an even more energy efficient way to do things in our homes? That's right, turning off lights and devices when we're not using them. This is super easy, costs nothing, and can make a big difference over time. I challenge all of you at home to pick one device in your home today and commit to make sure it's only on when it's being used. Once that's mastered, you can add to your efficient behaviors. More on that in a little bit. Oh, I love trivia crack. Okay, Sarah, how about you read the question to keep score? Zakai and I have some cool buzzers, so we'll know who gets the answer. But first, in case you're just joining, my name is Aaliyah and this is my brother Zakai. We're able to be in the same room because, well, we live in the same house but we're still practicing safe social distancing by being in a completely different location from Sarah today. All right, Sarah, you ready for the game? Yes, let's play some trivia crack, but be sure to wait until I finish reading the question before buzzing in. Everyone at home, play along and see how many questions you can get correct. Here we go. First question. And the category is renewable energy. Which renewable now produces the most electricity in the state of Arizona? This one has to be hydroelectric. And a lot of that is thanks to the Roosevelt Dam. Ding, 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 ding. You got it. First point is yours. Next Here question. We go. And the category is energy transformations. When riding the energy bike, you were producing electrical energy from what other forms of energy? This is chemical and mechanical. Chemical from the food we ate and mechanical from spinning the bike wheels. Yes, Aaliyah gets the point again. Great job. Okay, next question. Here we go. And this category is Electricity. What do we call the effect of using turbines, copper wire, and magnets to generate electricity? This one is the electromagnetic effect. We talked about it when we talked about solar panels, wind turbines, and hydroelectric dams. Ding, 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 ding. Three points in a row. Okay. All right, Zakai, you can question. get this one. <laughs> And the category is natural resources. Okay, which of these is not a renewable resource? This is a good one. Natural gas is a fossil fuel and a non-renewable. You got it, Zakai. That's 
One point for you. Very good. Okay, next question. And the category this time is renewable energy. What energy source strikes solar panels to generate electricity? This one is photons. Photons are little packets of light, because you can remember the word photo means light. Bing, 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 bing. That is correct. Great job, Zakai. Okay, next question. And the category is energy transformations. When using a toaster, you are converting electrical energy to... This one has got to be thermal energy because that is heat energy. You got it, Aaliyah. That is correct. Four points now. Okay, next question. The category this time is history of SRP. What year was SRP founded? SRP was founded well over 100 years ago, in 1903. Wow, that's amazing. It sure is. Great job, Zakai. You got it. That's three points. Okay, moving on. Next question, and the category is... Oh, double points this time. Who's gonna get it? Okay, which of the following is not associated with climate change for double points? I'm gonna let Zakai do this one, actually, because I'm not too sure. I don't know why I clicked the buzzer. The Coriolis effect is not associated with climate change. That has to do with how liquids drain uh, clockwise or counterclockwise in the northern or southern hemisphere. Wow, that's really cool. Learn something new right here. That's right, Zakai, you just earned yourself double points. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna catch Moving up. Moving on. Natural resources. How long does it take the earth to produce coal? Two billion is definitely too many years, so I'm gonna go with 250 million. Bing, 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 bing. You got it, Aaliyah. Great job. Okay. Tie game. Moving on. The category is energy transformations. How many energy transformations take place in a coal or natural gas power plant to produce the electromagnetic effect? Well, 400 just seems like way too many, and I know we talked about some, so none can't be the answer. Let's go with four. Bing, bing, awesome. bing. Six points for you, Aaliyah. Great job, you two. Okay, moving on. The next category is, oh, another double points. Okay, where could solar panels eventually be placed where they can operate 24-7 365 days a year. Hmm. So for this one, we would need to put them in a place where it's never nighttime. But it's night everywhere on Earth, at least some of the time. In the mountains, in the desert, even under the ocean. But in space, there's nothing rotating, so the sun will be shining all the time. So in space. Great job, Zakai. You got double points again. Okay, next question. And the category is natural resources. About how many pounds of coal are burned each year to provide the electricity for an average Phoenix Metro home? I remember we said this one was 9,000 pounds, which is also about the equivalent to an elephant's weight. You got it, Aaliyah, great job. Okay, we are tied again, here we go. Electricity is the category. What type of electricity did we demonstrate when using the UFO sticks? This was current electricity because we had to touch both terminals and form that complete circuit. Nice Great job, job Zakai. You got it. All right, the next category is, it's a video challenge. Name the energy transformation happening as water spins the turbine. I think this one is kinetic to mechanical, because kinetic is the movement of the water, and mechanical because we're spinning a turbine or generator. 
Bing, 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 bing. That's correct, Aaliyah. Okay. And this is for the tiebreaker. This renewable energy source accounts for only 5% of the total electricity produced in Arizona each year. Right now, solar power is only at about 5%, but I would like to see that number get much, much bigger. Yeah, I would as well. You got it! Solar energy! For the win! Great Good game, Aaliyah. job, Zakai. Nice job. And Aaliyah, you both did a great job. How did you do at home? Good. As a final wrap up, let's turn to Twitter to talk about some other things that you can do to conserve or save energy at home. We know why that's important, right? Saving energy means saving natural resources and saving your parents money. My friend Morpheus is right. Saving energy is only a click away. Right, so has anyone ever left the room but left the lights on? Right, we shouldn't do that. Just turn the lights off when you leave a room. Super simple, turn them off. Same goes for video game systems, TVs, and computers. I hope you don't leave them on when you're not playing, or even worse, overnight. When you get done playing, make sure to turn these devices off to save some energy. And another one, let's see, does anyone have windows at home that let in the hot afternoon sunlight? Well, you can close the blinds or curtains to stop that sunlight from warming up the room in your house. Do any of you guys like to have a ceiling fan on? Ceiling fans can make you feel up to 10 degrees cooler, but believe it or not, they don't actually change the temperature of the room. They just make you feel cooler. So if you're leaving a room where the ceiling fan is on, make sure to turn it off. Absolutely. And remember these numbers, kids, they're super important. Tell your parents to set the thermostat to 78 degrees in the summertime and 68 degrees in the winter. Since heating and cooling is the biggest energy user in the home, small adjustments can lead to big energy savings. Has anyone ever opened the fridge on a hot day and stood there waiting for the food to jump out at you? Or even worse, have you ever left the fridge door open and walked away? Please make sure to close the fridge door and keep that nice cold air inside where it belongs. And what other door at home do we want to remember to close? Guys, close the door when you're coming in or out of the house. You don't want to let out all that precious cold air on a hot summer day, do you? We are so glad you all joined us today to learn more about renewable energy, electricity, and energy efficiency. Please share this video with your parents, your siblings, your grandparents, and your friends to save them energy and money too. You have the power. And remember, your energy choices can make a difference every day. We want you to save electricity. Please tell your parents they can download the SRP app to track their energy usage and more. We have had so much fun today with you all and hope you learned something new about electricity, energy, and natural resources. Thanks for joining us for this awesome learning opportunity sponsored by SRP. We hope you had fun learning about how we will power the future and we look forward to getting back into your classrooms next year so you all can ride the energy bikes. Absolutely. Take care, everybody, and please stay safe. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.